Hey guys, now I know I'm super late about making this video, but I wanted to research before I even made this because I wanted to talk about a few things and I really hope my facts are correct because I spent several hours doing this and yeah. I hope you guys enjoy it. Hey guys, let's get this out of the way. Dealing with just two Pokemon from the news, Titanol and Civelli. They are not Chimeras. A Chimera is only one creature. The body of a lion, the head of a goat, tail of a snake. And it, this is from Greek mythology. It's born of the union of Tyon and Edon. Tyon is the monster from Greek mythology who is the last son of Gaia. And Edon is the mother of all monsters. Half woman, half snake. Now, this concept of chimeras and alchemy that everybody keeps talking about only came about in 1999 with the release of the manga Full Metal Alchemist. Now don't get me wrong, I love Full Metal Alchemist, but what they're talking about in the manga is not a chimera. It's just a hybrid, something that actually is a part of alchemy. Now that we have that out of the way, I want to talk about Type Null and Savali because that's what excited me the most out of the news. So I've been saying that Type Null is based off a night marcher, and for those of you who don't know what a night marcher is, is it's a spirit of an ancient Hawaiian warrior who marches through the islands of Hawaii on a new moon. Now, as I've stated in my past two videos, see the links in the description or click on the i card if you want to learn more about the night marchers. As I stated in those videos, they are a huge part of the mythology of Hawaii. Now, the night marchers or Hakupu marchers, they march only on the nights of Kain, Ko, Lo, Aku, and Kalo, and they are said to come forth from the burial sites and march to past battlefields or even to sacred places. If you hear the sounds of their drums or chanting, you must go inside to avoid them. Now placing tie leaves around your house will ward off evil spirits such as the night marchers. Now getting back to how Type Null and Savali link into the night marchers, I want to first look at the physical features of both of them. Type Null especially because of its helmet. Its helmet looks like a night marcher's helmet and I think that's a really cool nod towards Hawaiian mythology. Now Another thing that links the two is Savali's ability. You see, night marchers can actually change depending on which island they are. Just like Savali has the ability to change its type depending on what it is holding. And I also think Type Null and Savali have a connection to Arceus. In a way, and I'm not even sure how they do, but maybe somebody took a part of Arceus or some object that Arceus infused with a lot of power and corrupted it just like the night marchers are corrupted Hawaiian warriors. So that kind of be a really cool knot connecting all of this together. Moving on, I want to talk about Jangmao and its evolution, Hakmao and Komao. When I first saw them, my mind immediately went to one thing, Polynesian warriors. Now Jangmao doesn't really look like it could be a Polynesian warrior, it just looks like a cute adorable dragon Pokemon, but its evolution surely do. Hakmao feels like, to me, a young warrior just starting off in battle, and I have to say I love its look. The fact that it's bipedal and with those very heavy arms, I just love it. I don't know why I can't explain it, but I think it's adorable. Now Komao is where I really got the Polynesian feel, and mostly because of its tail, as ironic as it sounds. Now Komao does have the coloring of what you kind of sometimes will see for the Hawaiian chiefs and warriors with the red and yellow, but it's its tail that really caught my eye. I'm going to include a link down below so you can read about the Polynesian warrior weapons because that's what it reminded me of. It reminds me of the shark tooth club that the Polynesian and Hawaiian warriors were known for. And it's kind of a really cool weapon because they didn't have iron, they didn't have steel, so they had to make do with what they had, and they had wood and shark's teeth. Now, if you guys ever saw the show on Spike TV, Deadliest Warriors, they had one on the Maui Warriors and that was a pretty cool episode and it showed off the Shark's Tooth Club. So if you want to see it in action, check that episode out. And to me, it really feels like a great nod to the Polynesian culture, just having this evolutionary line. Now the last thing I want to talk about comes from Pokemon Generation. Pokemon Generation Episode 6, The Reawakening, explores what actually happened to create three legendary beasts of Johto, Entei, Raikou, and Suicune. Now when it shows 
shows the tower on fire, it shows the three Pokemon that died in the tower. And if you look at them, well, they don't look like something that we've all thought it was. For a very long time, there was a theory that Entei, Raikou, and Suicune came from the Pokemon Vaporeon, Jolteon, and Flareon being revived by Ho-Ho. But I feel that this episode is the Pokemon Company along with Game Freak telling us that that's not actually what happened. That it was another set of Pokemon. And the Aura Guardian had created a tweet about this and this is where my idea actually comes from. I have to thank Blitzmaster Bruno and Exavdam. I'm so sorry if I said your name wrong. I'm just trying to sound it out here. So sorry. But they really got my ideas flowing. And now as you can see, Blitz suggests that Alola could have been close to the Whirl Islands and Sinnoh would. Sometime before Regigigas split the continent. And I have to really agree with him and all the credit of that goes to him. Because before that, I really had no idea what I thought they could possibly be. But after he said that, kind of got me thinking, what if they were the fossils of the Alola region? Or what the fossils we're going to get are? Maybe these were Pokemon that just recently died out and it's going to be the first time we see a mammal type Pokemon. Now, I really do like the idea of Regigigas splitting Alola away from the Whirl Islands because that's a totally amazing knot and a tie-in to Generation 2. Now, Zadam, I think I'm saying your name right, brought up a good point when he stated, well, that would be a nice fallback to Generation 1 with three foot fossils because I had suggested maybe the three Pokemon were three different types. What if we we're going to get a fire rock fossil, a water rock fossil, and an electric fossil? I think that'd be totally cool. And I have to say, with it being the 20 year anniversary of Pokemon, I think we're going to get some really good nods to Generation 1 and 2. Now, I've come up with three possible animals these Pokemon can be based off of. The first being the Dire Wolf, who lived in North America during the late Cretaceous period, around 125,000 years ago to 10,000 years ago. They lived in a diverse ecosystem ranging from the broad plains and grasslands and even some forests and mountains of North America to the arid savannas of South America, dying off around 9,440 years ago. The second is the Hodok wolf or the Ezo wolf. This is an extinct species of gray wolf that lived in Northeast Asia. They were killed off during the Meiji period between 1868 to 1912. And my third and final one is the boy dog, which is an extinct Hawaiian dog. Now, I don't really think they do the poi dog just because of what it was in Hawaiian culture, but it did exist during the early 1800s. It was recorded by Captain Cook, and the poi dog is actually a source of food for the ancient Hawaiian people. And it could be any of these three extinct dog-like animals. Now, down in the comment section below, do you agree with me? Do you think Technol is a night marcher? Do you like Jang Mo's evolution? Do you think it actually is a nod to the Polynesian? And do you think that the Pokemon that we saw in generations possibly could be the fossil Pokemon for Sun and Moon. Leave that in the comment section down below. Give this video a like and if you're new please subscribe. I have fun making this and I love to hear from you guys. Well bye guys.